What's up, everyone? So, uh, I'm back from England. And, uh, I gotta say, I had a little bit of jet lag the last couple days. And, uh, I feel better today, finally. That was tough. It was, it was, uh, it's tough to, 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 to come back from, uh, um, to come back from over there. It was easy going over, tough coming back. A uh, coupon code today, Aaron just put it up there, RB411, 20% off everything in my store. You guys know that I get blocked all the time. I don't get blocked. They get demonetized all the time. Uh, I don't care about that though. As long as I'm selling mugs, t-shirts, and my book, then you guys are, uh, you know, supporting my channel. I'm trying to bring stacks back. That's the thing. That's that's another goal in my life is to get people playing stacks again. <laughs> Everybody thinks that you lose your hearing when playing when playing uh, stacks, but uh, they don't have to be deafeningly loud. Okay, that's that's one of the secrets. Jason just said everyone is getting blocked. Okay, so I have no videos being blocked right now. None, zero. I've 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 deleted everything I needed to delete. I actually have one more video that that got demonetized that I want to uh, cut out this one section to, and I want to make a video of it. It's a Katy Perry song. It's, it's Dr. Luke and Max Martin, but. I have some, uh, I have some, some thoughts about that. Okay, so the hardest chord progression to solo over is not what you think. I touched upon this in a video called "It's Time for a Major Change." Uh, time for a major change. Uh, giant steps is not the hardest chord progression to solo over. One of the reasons that giant steps is not the hardest chord progression is that that uh, it has a predictable pattern, and as long as you follow that pattern. Uh, you can solo over it pretty easily if you practice it enough. Uh, you know, but in order of magnitude, you know, people say, or I used to say, the difference between a fusion player and a jazz player is is that a jazz player can play rhythm changes. And um, whereas if you can't play over rhythm changes, you're a fusion player. <laughs> so uh, because of the way, how fast the chord progression moves. Now, if you know... Rhythm changes. That's rhythm changes. One sixty-five. You typically play it in B flat. Sometimes play it in F. Play it in all different keys. C is a good change key for rhythm changes. But that's not the most difficult chord progression. The most difficult chord progression. Sorry, sorry about the autofocus. So the most difficult chord progressions to me are playing over major chords. Okay, playing over the four and five chord. I think that people because those are the most common chord progressions to play over and i think that's where people sound the worst when i listen to, to players they don't know how to just outline the four and five chord if you think about how frequently these things happen i mean how does frequently does giant steps happen well it happens in giant steps and it happens in countdown two two cold train tunes so what's up murphy that's my niece murphy so um so the most typical chord progression though is one, four, five, and six. It's in a million songs. Once again, I have a video on that called the four chords of pop music that talks about the, you know, thousands and thousands of songs that are written over those four chords. And we did Despacito and just ton with or without you, tons of songs that use those chords. But the four, four and five, okay, the, the subdominant and dominant are the two most common 
chord progressions to play over. And I'd say the most difficult, okay, because you have to really play just the right notes on them, okay? And I want to demonstrate here. I just did a little little thing with a drum drum backing track and um, to demonstrate the first way to go about this. So the two chords I'm going to use, I'm going to go from E major, three, four, to D major, two, three, four. That's it. Okay, four and five. And... Now I have some extra tensions in there on the on the I play a little sus chord in there and stuff like that, but uh, I'm gonna uh, play it here and I'm gonna just start by just going over the basics of soloing over it. Okay, essentially connecting the chord tones. All right, so here we go. Here's E major. Okay, now I just went to that F sharp note because that note is the third of D major. So I started on E major. I started on the third of the chord. Watch, I'll try it again. I'll start on the root. That time I ended on the fifth of the D major chord there. And why do I know it's the fifth? Well, because I know where the notes are in the neck. But I know that there's an arpeggio right there. Or there's my D major chord. So I'm thinking this. Then. Okay, so now I'm going to go, and the next thing I'm doing, I'm going to transition. I'm going to go from E to D and then back to E and try and hit a chord tone on the downbeat of the of the E major. I'm going to try and find the closest chord tone to the note that I'm on. Okay, so right there I played that D, and you notice how that didn't sound right, even though that could have been an E7. Okay, so now I'm going to do it right. Check it out. There we go. Okay, so I put a little six chord in there just to make the progression interesting. So I went to an F minor 11 chord there. Uh, so I wanted to add that extra chord in there because like I said, out of the four chords of rock, that is one of the th three of the four chords of rock. Okay, so uh, now let me do this again. And um, I'm going to use add nine arpeggios. So an add nine, meaning I'm going to add the ninth to each of the arpeggios. So in E major, the ninth is a note F sharp. So it's going to be like this. Or it'd be one, two, three, five. It's just like a giant step. When Coltrane plays those patterns, right? Right? That's just a one, two, three, five pattern. It's an add nine chord though. Okay, so over E add nine would be this. And then D add nine would be this. And I went back. I'm going to go back back and forth between the, those two add nine chords. It gives me an extra note to use that's really interesting. Here we go. Two, three, four. Here's my add nine.
Here's my F sharp chord. So, there, I'm really... Those are hard to finger, those arpeggios. That's the, that's the thing. Those add nine sounds are, are difficult to play, right? Uh, you have to learn them in the different positions. Down here, for let's say I do D add nine. Then I have to do it here. Then I have to do it here. Then here. Then I'm here. Uh, you can also skip strings like that. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to play different notes here. On the E chord, I'm going to play the the um, I'm going to play the sus four. Or, and then the D chord, I'm going to play the the sharp four. Check it out. See what it sounds like. There's my sharp four. There's my sharp four again on the D chord. Okay, so E chord. There's my Lydian note on the D chord, so. You can hear when those chords are changing there, right? Uh, so those are the little tension notes that you can play on there. Those on the um, between the between the chords there. You've got whatever the scale tones are. Um, you can add the uh, whatever the uh, the you know you can add the ninth. You can add the fourth. Okay, on the D chord, it's a sharp four. Um, so somebody just said, anybody not understanding anything? Let me just take that. Okay, so that is a, a major triad, E major. Okay, E, G sharp, B. If I add the fourth to that, I got E, G sharp, A, B. E, G sharp, A, B. It's just like, uh, you know. That's all that is. That's a sus chord there. That's an E, um, E sus four with the third, okay? Those are really great sounds. And I can do the same thing with the sharp four on the D. So here's D major. D, F sharp, A, D. I'm going to add the sharp four in that. One, three, D, F sharp, G sharp, A. What's up, flat five? Right? Once you master these kind of sounds, they're really cool to use over other types of chords as well. Um, uh, if I have a, let's say I've got an F sharp minor 11 chord here. So let's do this. Let me make this F sharp minor 11, my first chord here, and just loop it here. So I'm gonna go like this. 
I gotta change the notes here. Get rid of that. Let's see. Okay, so that's this F sharp minor 11 chord. I'm gonna loop it now. Uh, let me do this here. See if this will, let's actually see if this will loop. I gotta take the, these notes out here. Hold on one second. So we'll just play over. We're just gonna play over one chord here. All right. Okay. Let's see. Let's, let me see if this actually will loop. This will be cool. If it does. It does. Okay. So now. Those kind of sounds, like the E sus4 with the third, sounds really cool over this. Watch. Okay, so I'm using some different kind of sounds in here. Hold on, let me stop this for a second. I'm using some natural sixes like this. That's a and some. Uh, uh, I'm using some flat sixes. I mean, that's Aeolian, and then that is a Dorian sound. Okay, that's a cool. Those are cool, cool sounds. I think that that is. To me, really interesting those kind of things. Um, so I'm gonna play a little bit more on this, and this one I'm gonna use a, an uh, A add nine. I'm gonna use the E sus four with the third. Okay, so I'm gonna just use those two arpeggios to play over an F sharp minor seven chord. Okay, Let's see if we can do this now. Here we go. A at nine. Whoops. Hold on. I was one eighth, one sixteenth note off. It sounded like Dream Theater for a second. And that's at A at nine. Then E sus4. That's B add nine there, okay? Here's A add nine. Really cool sound, right? E. I love that. So I'm just using these little, um, I'm just using these little chord fragments here, there, right? Just some of these add nine sounds, uh, sus four sounds, it's very simple stuff. B add nine, B sus four, 
and A at 9. Or I can just simply use those three triads, A, B, and E. Let me do that, okay? I'll try and use them uh, in order of their... Um, in order of how they flow, I think, naturally. Here we go. So here's A. Here's E. That's, that's F sharp minor nine. Here's your B. I'll do A and B. There's my B. That's A and B. So, I did a little half step thing. Here's a little. I say I do a little half step thing basically just going up to G G minor and then back down to F sharp minor 7 so here's G minor 7 and then back down here's G minor You know, really, really simple things like that. Now, let's say that we just stay on a... Uh, this is on the D chord now. It's going to just loop on D, okay? So this is really D Lydian. I'm using just a little minor uh, pentatonic, or, or I'm using the major pentatonic a whole step above the root. That's another trick I've talked about on here. So you want to create on a D major chord. If it's a four chord, you can play an E major pentatonic. Uh, would be over it. One, two, three, uh, one, one, two, three, five, six. Right? Let me do it again. Here it is. Just playing simple, simple ideas, right? D major pentatonic. E major pentatonic. Okay. Really, really basic, basic ideas there. It's kind of awkward for me. I'm sitting, I'm playing with a strap. I never play with a strap. The guitar is way too high, way higher than I normally play. So my right hand is, feels very weird. Uh, so these kind of simple, simple progressions to me 
are really the hardest for people to play on, I think. What's up, China Mike? Good to see you, man. China Guitar Skeptic. Subscribe to him. So this kind of gets back to uh, uh, where you're learning these things, these arpeggios, right? It's like, where, where, how do you practice these things? Well, you get my book, RB411. And... Um, uh, and you work on the different positions. I showed you, you know, kind of how I'm seeing these things. If I'm in thinking D major, I'll start on the first available note in the lowest position. Right, and then... Or there's really four, I think, four good positions for this. So it's starting on the third here. First available note, always. Third, fifth, root. Then you got to go here, five positions, really. Then here. Then here. So there we go. So it's one position, two positions, three, here, at the note, and then you can actually add this. So I always think behind the note, at the note, above the note. If you think about it that way, then you're really never at a loss for it. So if I think of this D major chord here, behind it's going to be this. At it, it's going to be here. Above it, it's going to be here. Right? And then you're behind this D here. Or you can say you're at this A. So at it. Um, let's say this D behind. Then you're at the note. Then you're above the note. Then you're back up to here. So it's really, really, um, those are the ways to practice those things. And then what you do is you learn how to connect the positions. And you play stuff, you know, you can play your arpeggios in thirds like this. Hard to do. So here I'm going. Once you start getting these kind of uh, uh, these triad shapes down, you can start getting into um, uh, you can start getting into. where you start getting into um, things where you're playing different triads and different combinations. So I did E, E and A. So I start on E. And I did a little turnaround, um, E major. A, B flat, uh, A flat, B major, E major. So those are... Um, uh, different ways that I like to think over these chords here. It's just, it's just really, 
all this arpeggio connecting thing is 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 how you improve on your instrument. It's not just playing the scales, it's playing the arpeggios. You got to know where the scales are. You know, if I'm playing a D Lydian scale, if I want to play the linear, So I've got that D there, right? And um, where is it here? Right? So here's my scale. It's hard. Uh. Those are all my notes. That's my sound there. That's that's a sound there for that D Lydian, right? Um, so it's not just, um, it is not just playing the, um, it's not just playing the arpeggios. You got to be able to connect the scales. <laughs> I can go up a scale and come down an arpeggio. Then you can start getting into your... Those are more... That's more of like uh, when you get into more intervallic over it, right? Uh... But um, the um, I forget what I was just playing there. What was I talking about? Um, oh, oh, using the the uh, using the chords and the uh, scales and the arpeggios together. Um, let's see. Dave O's got several of your guitars, Mark. When you get them back, you expect to play like me. There you go. Um, uh, let's see here. Okay, Beato Book. Anything in my store? RB411. You want to support the channel? Do that. Become a member of the Beato Club. I see 1999. Who did that? Thomas, you're the man. Thank you so much, Thomas. Appreciate that. That's 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 really cool. You can always uh, uh, super chat, donate to super chat also. Um, so <clears throat> I've got a couple. Uh, uh, Thomas, thank you again, man. <laughs> um, 
you know, this copyright thing is that's been going around. Everybody's been talking about. I um, when I made that video the other day, I was really ticked off. I got 15 copyright emails from YouTube in one day. I've never had that happen before. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I called Paul, a video chat with Paul Davids. I talked to Adam Neely. I talked to Marty Schwartz. And, um, you know, I was kind of seeing what everyone's experience was. And it was everybody was getting the same stuff at the same time. And then Adam did a... Um, you should follow Adam on Twitter because uh, he did a really... Uh, he had a very interesting post where he found an advertisement um, on... Thank you, Mark. He found an advertisement for UMG. It was from the UK, though, that they're looking for people to specifically go over and look at YouTubers' videos to see if there's any copyright infringement. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... that's. Uh, I have the thing. I have... I, I, I did a screen grab of it as I scrolled down it to read it, and I was reading it to one of my buddies, and he couldn't believe it. And... Uh, I said, no, they're targeting people with big channels because they want to, you know, cash in. I'll give you an idea of, of the amount of money. So I had a video called Audio File or Audio Fooled. And it's basically where I say that people can't tell the difference between a um, MP3 that's at 320 and a WAV file. And it's a video on NPR that has a pro uh, that will do ran keep randomizing them every time it plays you six clips from six different um six different types of music and one of the tunes on there is a tune dark horse by katie perry well my assistant michelle at the time was wearing headphones so that you can hear the headphone bleed and now the the it's so low that the bots never picked it up it plays about 10 seconds of the song or so well they demonetized that video which has a million views okay so the idea of a video that with a million views i mean doesn't get a lot of views each month but it brought in probably $160 a month. Okay, that's not an insignificant amount. Um, and now it's zero. Now, what I could do is I could just cut that out of the video. But what it is, it's destructive. And I was talking to, to Paul Davids about this, about how I cut Randy Rhodes out of my one video because Ozzy claimed that, and I cut... Um, I cut things out of three different videos. I cut my, my Bloody Valentine out of one and Bruce Springsteen out of another. And YouTube put them back up and everything was fine. They weren't blocked. But I've never cut anything for, for it being demonetized. So um, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to cut that thing out of there. And honestly, this stuff is so disposable they're, they're, that they should be cut out of... of uh, you know, I love Max Martin. I think he's incredibly talented. But come on with this crap. It's ridiculous. It's literally ridiculous about this. So I have to go in. I have to cut out about 30 seconds of my video just to show them that they can't beat the system. Yeah, it destroys my video. It's only five examples that Michelle's listening through. But I'd rather not have them have the satisfaction of it because they can... Um, uh, uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. This is an educational video here. I'm, I'm showing people, for example, in Pro Tools, the increment that you can move up is 0.8 dB if you're using a, uh, if you're trying to raise a vocal or something. The reason is that a half a dB, the ear can't even perceive, okay? I have these people saying, oh, can you bring up the vocals a half dB? And I'm, and I say, no, I'll bring them up 1 dB. I'm not going to bring them up a half dB. You can't hear a half dB. And to prove it, I'd say, okay, I'm going to move the vocals up or down a half dB. Tell me what I did. And they can't tell. Anyways, focus on the positive, move on. Don't worry about those cats. Okay, anybody that uses cats is a jazzer. And I don't like people telling me what to do. You know who, 3311. I'm sure you're being nice about this and you're a great person, but don't tell me what to do. How's that? Amanda, they flagged you. No way, a big challenge. 
was a private and it was a choir and I was singing an original composition. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it is ridiculous. I, and I have plenty of people. If you upload a video unlisted, it'll still get flagged. Totally. Same thing. Um, now, I have no problem with people getting their copyright. Absolutely no problem. The things can get monetized. No, I don't care about that. I'm not going to have my channel dictated by whether I can play something or not. I want to play what I want to play. So that, and I don't care if it gets demonetized, okay? Because people support me. They buy mugs. They buy T-shirts. They buy my book, whatever. So that's all I'm going to say. Oh, I have for oh, those of you that have the HX Stomp, which I happen to have right here, and I'm not in, endorsed by Line Six or anything, even though I should be. Uh, I'm just kidding. I don't care if I'm endorsed or not. So this thing I have presets for, like the, my lead sound I'm playing there. And uh, I'm going to have them available probably um, maybe later today or tomorrow on the website. If you guys are interested, I have a bunch of presets that, that uh, me and and GL, um, my assistant of uh, the last 19 years, have made up. So, um, so, yeah, so look for those. Any of you guys that have HX Tops. They're not the ones for the regular size Helix, although we have some of those, too, that we're going to be putting up. Um, so, but this is a great lead tone here, I think. I think it's really good. If you need a little bit more gain, you know, you can do that. Um, Steven, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. That is just, you know, too, too kind. Thomas, Steven, thank you so much. That's so great. Um, okay. So that's all for today. Uh, you know, keep an eye out for things. I've got a new video coming out tomorrow uh, or maybe the next day that I'm working on that I think is really interesting. It's one of my most interesting videos that I've done. Um, I'm, I've been working hard on it and uh, it's a lot of work and it's, it's, uh, it's really fun. It's something I've been wanting to make for a long time and I figured out how to do it. So that's all for now. Please subscribe here. Give it a thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram at Rick Beato one DJ Green Arrow. Love you. You're great. The best. Everybody else I love as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, Frank. Tom. Aaron. RB411.